Hey guys, in this video, you're going to learn about the parts of the eye and how light moves through the eye into the brain and how we process that image. So we've got this 3D diagram here of the eye. Um, we're going to start with the outer part of the eye here. Um, it's kind of hard to see on this diagram, but the eye is covered in a clear casing. And that clear casing is just like what you might put on a phone, like a screen protector. But this clear casing is called the cornea. It wraps around the eye and it protects the eye. We've got this colorful part right here. This is called the iris. The iris is uh, the part of the eye that allows more or less light into the eye, uh, depending on how much light is in your environment. If you're in a really bright room, the iris will get smaller to let less light into the eye. If you're in a, a really dark room, it'll open up so that more light can get into the eye so you can see in that dark room. Um, you actually don't see a pupil here. Notice it's not black here in the center. And the reason is the pupil actually isn't a part at all. Um, it's black because it's looking back into the eye and there's no light in there. And so you're not seeing anything. It's just dark. Um, so what we see in this diagram is we're actually seeing the lens. And so behind the iris is really the lens. And so if I turn my diagram here, you can see that lens. So don't be confused when you hear people talk about a pupil. It's not really anything. It's just a hole. And so the iris just has a hole in the center that lets the light into the back of the eye. And the pupil is just the hole that exists there. So then we've got the lens. And the lens is this um, kind of... Um, ovalish, roundish part here. It's um, a part that allows you to focus near and far, just like you would on a camera. You would um, fix your lens so that you could focus near and far. Your lens and your eye does the same thing. It uses accommodation, which it modifies its shape so that it can focus near and far. And then the light will go through the pupil, through the lens, and the lens actually refracts the light. It flips it upside down. So the image that's put on the back of the retina here is actually upside down. It will get set to the brain that way, and then the brain interprets it and understands it right side up. Um, so when the light hits the very back, the center of the eye is called the fovea, where the, the central part of the image hits. And that part of the eye is the very back, right directly behind the pupil. The, this is your, your very central part of the image that goes onto the back of your eye. Um, it's also where the most cones are. Um, I'll talk about cones in a little bit. Let me finish the different parts of the eye. Then we've got the optic nerve here. The optic nerve is the nerve that takes the brain message that is going to be um, is going to be made by the rods and cones. It takes that message and sends it to the brain. And right here, where the optic nerve touches the eye, you actually have a blind spot, so you cannot see where the optic nerve touches your eye. Um, you don't notice when you're looking out into the world that you have one spot in your vision that you can't see from. Um, but the reason why you have that is because you don't have photoreceptors here because the nerve is attached. And so our brain is actually filling in that spot everywhere we look. It's filling it in um, and you just don't know it. There are tests that you can do to isolate your blind spot. You can just go online and um, type in find your blind spot. If you want to do that, they have tests online where you can actually see where your brain is filling in that spot that you have no photoreceptors. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about those rods and cones. Those are the photoreceptors that help us um, to understand and change that light into a brain message. Um, I'm going to have to go to a different diagram because this one you can't see the rods and cones. The rods and cones are tiny, tiny, tiny little cells inside of um, this retina here. And so I'm going to go to an image where you can see those a little bit better. Okay, so on this image, you can see a very zoomed in portion of the retina. So we have our eye here, and then we've got, if you were to zoom in on this retina, on this layer, this very light sensitive layer, you could see these cells here. And so I'm going to focus just basically on the rods and cones. I did like this diagram because it shows you the ganglion cells and the bipolar cells. Those do come up in the reading um, for our class, but it's really essential that you know rods and cones. So I'll talk about those um, and you, so that you know their functions. 
Okay, so like I said, you can see that through this eye is where the image comes. Here you can see a better um, example of the cornea, this outer layer. It's just a clear outer layer. It goes through the pupil, through the lens. It's refracted onto the back of the eye, and the fovea is the central most point of, of, of vision on the back of the eye. We've got our blind spot and our optic nerve right here. Okay, so here's our retina, and if we go very close into the retina, we can see we've got ganglion, bipolar cells, and rods and cones. And really, all you need to know for our class is that the ganglion cells receive that um, visual image first, and they pass it on to the bipolar cells, which is like the in-between messenger that sends it on to the rods and cones, and that's really all you need to know. You really need to know the functions of the rods and cones, and they're named based on their shape. So if you look at the shapes of these um, different cells here, they're really called photoreceptors. So the rods have this rod-like shape and the cones are kind of triangular. So the cones are actually very concentrated around in the, the central part of the back of the eye and the rods are dispersed around the eye. And so you're going to find most of the cones in the center in the back of the eye. I think cones are easy to remember their functions because their function starts with a C. So cones help you see color, which also starts with a C. It also helps you see clarity, fine detail, and then it also is uh, uh, concentrated in the center of the eye. So cones help you see color, they're in the center of the eye, and they help you see clarity. So that's what cones do. And then we've got rods, and the rods, like I said, they're just um, scattered throughout the eye, and the rods help you in low light settings. They're said to be very light sensitive, so in a very dark room, they can pick up the faintest of light. And so it helps you see in dark areas. It also rods, they see in black and white. And so in dark rooms, your cones, they're not, they can't pick up that light in dark rooms. And so you're not seeing color in, in dark rooms. Your rods are picking up light, but they can't see color. So in those, those dark areas, that you're, you know, maybe at night, you're not really going to see color because your cones can't pick it up. But your rods, they can pick up light. And so you're seeing in mostly black and white in those dark times. Okay, and so those are the functions of the rods and cones. Um, they are taking the light and they're helping you interpret the light. So we say transduction is, is occurring in the rods and cones. They're changing it into a brain message. It's changing light waves into a brain message and then it's sending it through the optic nerve to the brain. And so let me show you how that happens. So our optic nerve runs from each eye. So we've got one from the left eye that crosses over. And remember from our previous unit that everything from your right side is being um, processed in your left side of your brain. So we've got our left eye, it crosses over to the right side of the brain, it goes to the thalamus, the sensory switchboard, which sends it to the, the visual cortex back here in the occipital lobe. So then we go over here and our eye from our right side sends it to the left thalamus, which sends it to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe of the left side. So it's being processed in the other side of the brain. It's crossing over, going to the thalamus and being processed back here. Um, one other thing to know are feature detectors. Those are located in the visual cortex and those just help us understand, um, they help us recognize. And so um, whenever we get a, a, um, a visual message, it, it helps us pair it with um, like an object. It helps us recognize that object. And so if you have any kind of damage to your feature detectors, you might get that object through your sight, it might go through your eye into your brain, but your brain not be, might not be able to recognize it. Um, and so maybe that object is a face and you are picking up the face, the face is, that visual image is going to your brain, but your brain isn't understanding that it's a face. And so that's what feature detectors do. They help you take that image and help you recognize what that image is. Okay, I hope that's helpful. That was all the parts of the eye, then their functions, and then how it the light passes through the eye and gets all the way to the brain for processing.